just got done with this engine. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever built a better engine than this, truthfully. Um, built some pretty similar. Um, this one here, uh, big features, uh, billet special or ballot billet crank, balanced. Um, big, most people don't get is the titanium valves, copper seat head, titanium valves, like a $400 option. Uh, welded three inch block with a one inch spine, massive one inch spine. The thing is so huge. It's like stupid wide. None of that quarter inch plate stuff here. Charcoal color block. Uh, this has this head has the uh, solid slug welded intake tube. Um, uh, welded oil passage. So we do the max porting with the bronze bronze tube, which allows you to port until you crack through. Um, in most cases, if you're doing that at home and you port it until it cracked through the oil passage, that head is junk. But um, we've got some custom extruded uh, bronze tubing that presses into that oil passage to seal it. But this one has a solid slug. So instead of putting in a, uh, a bronze tube, we put in a solid aluminum slug, press that into the oil passage, then weld that onto the... Uh, uh, milled side then mill the head so that oil passage is completely filled and that way you can port over to it till it cracks but then instead of having like a bronze tube where you have to stop because that the port wall is now the edge of the bronze tube when you have the solid slug in there that entire oil passage is full of aluminum so you can open it up even a quarter inch bigger so this has that feature the solid slug um, welded uh, oil passage, so there's no oil passage at all. Um, all the oil um, oiling comes either through the push rods or the mist vapor, which normally oils the head. Uh, most of the three inch head gaskets don't have the uh, the punch out for the uh, oil passage anyhow. Um, so the vapor will be going through the overflow lines. We run the three eighths inch. This does have the welded intake tube. Uh, billet valve cover. He's got a spacer. I just have this valve cover. He's got the same valve cover um, He had bought the head and a bunch of parts and stuff, but then uh, He was like, oh, I need a bottom end. He ended up just sending me everything he had uh, and uh, He didn't want to have a chance of it blowing up or something So he was like just build me a bottom end do the assembly and stuff like that um, But yeah, th this thing is bad bad to the bone um, you know, we did, so when you got the three inch stroker, this is a pretty important tip here too, for anybody that's building a three inch, there's like three rod lengths. There's like, when you, when you go on to like the website, it'll say, and you go into the three inch pistons, it'll say, okay, use this rod, like the six, seven, six, five, which is a 3.525, I think length. And then there's like a six, two, three, four, but anyhow, you want to use so the 6765, which they recommend to use, I think ARC or NRA recommends to use a 6765 with a three inch piston. It's a drop in application, but the piston is like 90 thousandths in the hole if you use that rod. Then there's another rod. So there's three rods. There's a 6765, which is like 90 thousandths in the hole. There's another rod that leaves it like 40 thousandths in the hole. And then, but then you still have 40 thousandths plus the head gasket. So you, you're still like, you know, 90 thousandths piston to head. Um, distance so that's that's just going to cause all kinds of detonation because um, you want that quench effect so what we ended up doing was using the longest rod which is a six two three four which actually puts the piston like sixty thousandths out the hole and it's a different rod design than the regular rods there's a little bit different bend in the rod itself even though it says it's only like um i think it's like there's one that's 5.525, one that's 5.595, and then the 6234 is 6.25. So it's only like technically like 25 thousandths longer, but it it actually pushes the piston up like 50, 50, 60 thousandths because of the different rod. I don't know if they got the rod length wrong on that or what it is, but if you're going by just the length, you think, okay, the piston's 40 thousandths in the hole. Let me use this rod that's you know, 25,000 longer from the 
um, 5.595 to the 6 point uh, to the 3.625, that's only 25 thousandths difference, but it actually puts the piston like 40, 50 thousandths out the hole. We used that rod, milled the piston down, so we got zero deck, three inch four stroke, uh, billet PKR PM3 cam. We got the EC side cover with the bearings on the camshaft. Um, spark plug's been gapped, spark plug's been clocked. Um, the oil, the uh, exhaust gasket has been uh port match so there's no overhang it does have the charcoal color um gauge black venom 1.3 to 1 ratio rockers got um well over 400 lift probably closer to 460 lift titanium valves dual coil springs things should be able to rev to the moon a um, lot of control a lot of stabilization um this big uh not so when you take something out of a block like my theory, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I'm always thinking like, you know, it's not just like fumbling around anymore. You know, a year doing it, I thought I knew everything. You know, now I've been doing it for years and years and done so many of these builds. You're still thinking and learning. And uh, there's no more like putting it together and taking it back apart because you forgot something type of shit. But uh, anytime I'm thinking about a build and I'm, you know, the, the Tillotson blocks, they, they come in a 72 millimeter bore um if you're gonna go three inch that means you're taking out material even though you don't see uh blocks broken like you used to see them all the time with the old predator blocks once they came up with the reinforced stuff but still when you're taking material out of a block that wasn't designed to be that big it wasn't designed to be a three inch so whenever you whenever you take a material out, i like to put material in so if you're taking that and boring that out to a three inch i love adding the spine deck extension not so much but the spine um not only does it add the strength and the material back into the block that you've taken out it also adds it adds a lot of billet material up in the top strength and it and it deadens resistance if you think of like a a, a cymbal or something you tap and you're like tss, 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 tss. uh like on a drum set like tss, 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 tss. you put your hand on it's gonna go ding 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 it's gonna take the resonance out of the block anytime you can kill vibration balance crank you know lightweight valves good valve springs you know plenty of valve spring pressure plenty of balance in the bottom and then you know you, you you're taking the resonance out of the block with this it's also another um source of uh heat distribution like a big fin um really good feature um he's going to be running on methanol he did want the adjustable finned flywheel specifically asked for fin we did do the pvl we ran the uh ground strap to the head um this thing's pretty badass pk rpm3 billet cam so there's no compression release this thing will feel like it's going to snap your fingers off if you try flipping it here um total sail rings on the three inch piston something we got in stock total sail rings on the three inch piston it's a great package um tons of compression this thing's probably got you know 260 psi i think you need like uh 180 over over 180 is good if you can get up to around the 200 220 mark you're doing great um you know anything up we got the o-ring we o-ring the head he sent us the he had bought the head previously sent it back we o-ring the head we did do the la sleeve so it's got a lot more material in the sleeve we do that in every three inch block we always use the la sleeves we keep those plenty in stock um, that sleeve alone is twice the cost of any other sleeve and the reason we pay for it is because it works um, this this engine right here there's nothing in it there's no deck extension there's no uh, extra stuff you do the deck extension one thing I don't like about the deck extension um, the ARC doesn't really have a rod for them yet so you got it you got to get a Briggs rod as you know, Briggs is up and down, not diagonal, so the dip is on the bottom, which means when you put it on diagonal, it's sticking out the back instead of sticking down the bottom. And you gotta cut 90% of that dipper off. So you're losing your oil in just to get a longer rod in there. You know, there is some benefits to it, but I don't like the fact that you're losing your oil in system to get a little bit longer rod in there. This, in my eyes, is the ultimate setup you can get. Uh, titanium valves, you know, th there's nothing else that we offer not even on the site like we don't even have the solid slug max putting on the site there's nothing else i could even think of to put into this build um it's got absolutely every option um 
that we have available. He sent in a bunch of, uh, I don't know if it's Nibby or Nietzsche. Whatever this carb is here. Sent in about six different carbs. He's sponsored by this carburetor company. So he sent in Nibby. Sent in these. Uh, I'd like to see a 30 on this. He sent in, uh, what, like 26 to 32 or something. 26, 28, 30, 32. Maybe even something else. He sent in six carburetors, I believe. So, uh. This is the one we're gonna go with the 28 because this is the biggest one that matches up. Um, we have 30s that match right up to this. Um, it, a lot of the, like even the Nibby brand and a lot of the other ones come 30 millimeter, they step up to the size of the 32, the 34. So the 30, the 32 and 34 usually have the bigger bodies which doesn't line up with the welded intake tube or the standard uh, 35 millimeter OD. Um, any other type of the manifolds. So um, I'd like to see a 30 on it, but the 28 will do good. Seems like a really nice carburetor. We're gonna rework it for methanol. Um, already done some stuff to it. So we're gonna, actually I think this carburetor is already done, I'm sorry. We've already reworked this. This is all ready for methanol. Um, yeah, this engine's completely done. It's gonna be going out tomorrow. Just wanted to get a quick little video of it up and at them because i haven't done any videos in a long time so pretty cool i'll spin it around see the other side pretty cool big thick spine and actually this there's a plate first thing we did was mill the bottom uh of the ball of the tilting block we took that boss off here you can see where this was milled everything was milled flat then we took a piece of eighth inch plate and welded the whole plate on. So it was a big cap. So another big reinforcement to the top of the block. Then we welded this whole spine on. So it's got a plate, a square plate, and this big spine welded on. It's pretty badass, man. This thing is, uh, this thing is the business right here. So. Hope you guys like the build. Paul from Paul's Cots. You guys need anything, you know where to find me, paulscots.com. Actually going to be having a new website soon. We're going to have some new management come up. Um, you know, it's just, it's a lot for me to run. So I'm just going to do the builds and we're going to have uh, some new management come in. So you guys will probably like that stuff. Um, but yeah, hope you guys like the build. Check us out at the website, paulscots.com. If you got any questions, you could always text me at 781-492-7358. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, have a nice day.